cool. Well, guys, welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, so today is going to be all about setting up your business. And basically, a couple things that we need to know. First and foremost, um, let me just maybe take two, three minutes to introduce myself for anybody and everybody that doesn't know who I am. I'll keep it short, I promise. Uh, my name is David Dodge. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a landlord. I'm a flipper. I'm a wholesaler. I'm a lender. I'm a coach. I do a lot of things with real estate. I love real estate. I'm so incredibly passionate about real estate. And I love helping people get their first deal. I love teaching people you know, how they can buy rental properties and use the Burr method. You could say I got my hands full um, in terms of you know, being actively investing. I, I love to invest. I'm very active. In fact, I put 13 unit building under contract uh, earlier this week on uh, Monday, actually yesterday morning. Um, typically doing a couple wholesale deals a month and usually adding a couple rental properties to the portfolio every single month. And I usually have at least one or two fix and flips kind of on the side that we're doing just for fun. So we do a ton of stuff. And um, again, love helping people, love providing value and uh, working with people. So guys, I'm, I'm so happy you're here. Welcome. Um, that's just a little bit about me. Hopefully you guys know a little bit about me if you're here, but if you don't, no problem. That's who I am. I've written uh, three books. They're available on Amazon and Audible about real estate investing, wholesaling, so on and so forth. I um, have a podcast called Discount Property Investor. And I also uh, am one of the hosts over at Wholesaling Inc. now too, which is really my passion. It's really where I want to be. I love working with that team and that group. And I love helping people get their first wholesale deal. It's so incredibly fun because it's a great place to start. And it's a great place to really build a ton of good skills, great skills that can be used in all other aspects of real estate investing. So enough about that. Enough about me, guys. Again, thanks for coming. Um, if you're new, to, if you're just joining, tell me where you're from and that you can hear me just so I know uh, you guys can hear me here. Okay. Number one, lesson number one today when it comes to setting up your business is you do not need a business. Whoa, crazy to be able to get out and start marketing and or to do a deal. If that's what's holding you back, it shouldn't be. Now, I recommend you have a business for multiple reasons that we're going to get into in a minute. But do you need a business to go do a deal? And the answer is no, you don't. All right. You don't need a, web, a fancy website. You don't need a business card. You don't need an LLC or an ink, right, from your local state. Um, let's see, it would be the secretary of state is who you file that with. And we're going to get to that, right? Uh, you don't need these things to do real estate. You don't need these things to get your first deal or to do deals, all right? So again, don't sit on the sidelines and think, I don't have my logo for my website or my business card doesn't look good. These are things that are holding people back and it's BS, all right? They are, there are things that you do not need to go do deals in this business. You do absolutely 100% do not need these things to get started. However, I highly recommend, we got some more people coming in. Welcome, guys. I highly recommend that you get yourself an LLC for a number of reasons. But again, I want to keep it very simple today. And I would say number one reason is going to be because you're going to get to take advantage of tax law, which is going to allow you to make money, spend that money. So you have profit and you have expenses. And then what's left is what you're going to get taxed on as a business. All right. If you don't have a business, you're going to get taxed on all of your profit and you're not going to get to offset it with those expenses. So number one advantage is going to be that you are going to get to keep more money. You're going to pay less taxes. Number two is liability, right? LLC stands for limited liability company. Right. And there's other ways to, to do this. You can set up an, an, you can get an, uh, an, an ink or incorporate. Um, and there's different classifications with, within each of these, you know, but again, don't overthink it. Creating an LLC is definitely going to, you know, allow you to A, file your business as a business, meaning you're going to have a separate tax return. All right. But it's going to allow you to save and keep much more money, much more money. Right. And then also it's going to limit your liability. So uh, we have a question here. Do I need a license of any sort to sell contracts? And the answer to that question is, uh, no. However, there are certain states that have required you to have a license if you're going to do more than like one or two deals in the calendar year. So the short answer is no, but the, but the long answer is, is it's going to depend. If you're trying to make a business out of this and you live in, 
you know, a state like Arkansas or Illinois, and there's a few other places around the country, then yes, you will need to have a license. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I am not required to be licensed and no, I am not licensed. I don't know about every little, you know, nook and cranny of the U S guys. I'm going to be honest. There's four or five States that require it, uh, maybe less. And there's even some cities that may require it within each state. So you are going to be responsible to go find that out in your neighborhood. I'm sorry. I don't have all that memorized because there's a lot of it, right? South Carolina. I don't know. I don't think so, but don't quote me on that. This is this, this is the live that the live that I needed. All right, cool, Dave. I'm glad you're here, buddy. South Carolina, you live there. Oh, got it. Sorry. Yes. Thanks for dropping that. I did ask you <laughs> to tell me where you're from. South Carolina is a great market. My wife loves South Carolina. Um, yes, of course. No problem. Okay. So setting up an LLC can be done um, by yourself. However, I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you hire a professional to do that. All right. I work with people, the, a great team over at Easier Accounting, and I want to share them with all of my fans. So I'm going to drop a link in here. Now, this actually has wholesaling link on the bottom of it, but this is a great link where you guys can go book a free strategy call with them. No money out of pocket. You can book a call. You can learn more. They help me set up my LLCs. Now, I've set up some LLCs in the past by going to my Missouri. That's where I live. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. My Missouri Secretary of State's website. And I've done it in the past. And you can do it too on your own. However, it's not recommended. You want somebody that knows what they're doing to set these up because if you set it up wrong, not only are you going to have to redo it, but then you're going to have to go in and dissolve it. And that process can, can be time consuming and costly if you go get an EIN number, which we're going to get to in a minute, and create an operating agreement and you do all these other things that are going to be needed. So my advice would be book a call, work with the people that I work with. They help me all the time. They can help you too, and they'll do a free strategy call with you guys. If you want to go try to do it on your own, that's fine, but I wish you a lot of luck because if you screw it up, it's going to be costly, time-consuming, and you're going to have to redo it. So just, just don't do that. That's my, that's my honest, honest opinion. All right, so number one, you're going to want to get yourself an LLC. Again, if you've been here since the beginning, it's not required, but it is definitely highly, highly suggested. In fact, if you're doing multiple deals a year, you'd be dumb not to have one. The only caveat is, is if this is what's stopping you from marketing to go out and get deals for your real estate business, that's BS. Just start the marketing. You don't need it, right? Especially just to get the one deal. I think I did the first five deals in my name when I started this business full-time eight years ago, right? But you're going to want it, especially when it comes time for taxes, because you're going to be able to drastically reduce the amount of taxes you're going to have to pay on these profits. And I'm talking a difference of, you know, maybe somewhere between 30 and 40% hopefully down to maybe around 10%. Whoa, that's a big difference. And yeah, it is. It is a big difference. All right, so number one, LLCs. These guys can help you. My friends over at Easier Accounting, there's a link in the chat. Uh, number two, you are going to want to create an operating agreement. Hey, these guys can help you with that too. You can also find generic operating agreements online. Um, you can go to Google search and just use, I like the image search, to be honest. I don't like just going through websites because you're going to find a lot of people trying to sell you stuff. But if you can go to a Google image search and type in operating agreement for simple real estate business, you find a million different templates you can make your own, or you can have a professional, which again is probably recommended in this case, help you, uh, you know, write that and draft that up. The operating agreement is essentially going to be delivered to the bank along with the LLC docs as well as it's going to come in, you're going to need it when you go to closing. So whenever you are doing deals and you talk to a title company, they're going to say, hey, Dave, or in this case, well, also David here, you, you got a couple other people here, right? Of course, they're going to say, hey, John, hey, Tim, hey, hey, Sam, you know, are you buying this in your personal name or selling it in your personal name? Or are you buying this or selling this in an entity? And if so, we're going to need your articles of organization. That's your LLC. We're going to need your operating agreement. And we're going to need your EIN. So the next thing that you're going to want is you're going to want to then, once you have your LLC and your operating agreement, is you're going to want to go to irs.gov and apply for an EIN. And an EIN is an employee identification number. And it doesn't matter if you don't have any employees or you don't plan to have any employees. That EIN is what allows you to connect that business 
to the IRS, hence irs.gov. Now, again, I wouldn't suggest you do this on your own. I've done it in the past and I've succeeded. I've also done it in the past and failed and had to do it over again. And I had to unwind and, um, you know, get rid of what I did. And it's time consuming and costly. So your best bet is to just hire a professional, but it's not going to be very expensive. This is a very, very cost effective thing that's going to save you tons of money, limit your liability, and it's going to make you look professional. You're also going to have tax returns that are filed under your, your LLC or on behalf of your LLC. So guess what? Now you're going to actually have a business and you're going to be able to go apply for business credit. Whoa, that's cool. And you're going to be able to use this business tax return to go get loans. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. So LLC, start simple, guys. That's where we want to start. Um, we're going to want to get one, get, get an LLC created for our real estate investing business. Don't overthink it. My business is called House Sold Easy. I have another business called uh, Affordable Home Buyers. I got another business called Rainy Days LLC. I got another business called Better Days LLC. I have another business called Sundays LLC. I got another business named Rock Road LLC. Um, I have a business called Discount Property Investor LLC. Um, I probably have three or four I can't even think of right now. Probably got about 10 of them, right? So you don't necessarily need 10 by any means. I have a lot of different moving parts in my business and I don't like to hold rental properties, you know, outside of an LLC, but at the same time, you don't need an individual LLC per rental, all right? So again, trying to keep this simple and generic here, guys, I don't want to confuse anybody. So number one is you need to get the LLC. You can get it at the Secretary of State website within your state. If you live in Pennsylvania, don't go to Alabama. Come on. Go to the Pennsylvania website of the Secretary of State or work with my friends at Easier Accounting. They're going to help you. They help me. It's going to be better. You're not going to get, you're not going to screw it up and you're going to know it's done right. Next is that operating agreement, as I mentioned. And then third and final thing is to get the EIN number. Why do you need all three of these? Here's why. In order to have a business, right? Not only do you need to have all these things, but you need to have a bank account. All right. You can't be using your personal checking account and have, an, and have a registered business. You need to have a business bank account. Well, guess what, guys? When you walk into the bank, I know because I've done this 32 times probably, maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, but at least 20, <laughs> is, is they're going to say, hey, you want to open up a business account today? Great. We're going to need three things from you. Really four. The fourth is your driver's license, right? But you're going to need those articles of organization from your Secretary of State's website that you can print off or you know get mailed to you. You're going to need an operating agreement. The operating agreement basically lays out the, you know, who owns the company and what the company does. And in the event that there's multiple partners, who's got what share, and it basically can help, you know, with, um, with outlining, you know, what is happening with your business. And we modify and amend our oper operating agreement all the time, but it doesn't have to be crazy. It can be, you know, one or two pages. I think mine's maybe... 15, but it's a little bit more detailed, but don't overthink it. It can be simple. And then the third thing that bank is going to ask you for is they're going to ask you for their, for the EIN number, because they want to make sure you're paying taxes. They want to make sure that they're reporting the income and the expenses within the account. If, if they need to, to the IRS, and they're going to need to report any interest that they pay you on that account to the IRS, because that's taxable. So in order to do this the right way, guys, you're going to need an LLC, you're going to need an operating agreement, and you're going to need an EIN number. Now, Easier Accounting, my friends over there, they've helped me set these up, all, all, of three, all three of these things, and they can help you. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. They're going to get it done the right way the first time, and uh, you know it, it's probably going to be cheaper than if you screw it up on your own, I'll be honest, because you're going to have to undo it and redo it, which is no fun. Okay, so those are the three things that you're going to really need to get a business. Don't overthink it. You could have this done in a couple days or you could hire these guys and they can just go to work for you. Um, but this is going to allow you to a, get a biz, get a business checking account. It's going to allow you to then go get credit in your business. And it's going to allow you to file a separate tax return, which is where the liability comes in. Now, if you own a property in an, in an LLC or you're even wholesaling, let's say you're wholesaling in an LLC and something goes wrong, well, somebody can sue that entity, but if that entity doesn't own anything, they can't get anything. That's the cool part. That's where the limited liability comes in. 
Okay. Now, additionally, by having the LLC, um, you know, this is way high level, of course, and I'm just going to touch on this. But, you know, if if something really bad happens and, you know, getting sued obviously is, is a bad thing, of course. But let's say like the business falls apart. Right. And you have to file bankruptcy. Well, guess what? You can file bankruptcy in your business, not in your personal name, but in a business. Donald Trump does this all the time. Right. And just wash your hands of that company and that entity and and not have to worry about all your other assets. So it allows you to put your assets into buckets and protect them not only from lawsuits, but it also protects you know those buckets from spilling over into other buckets. Now, you guys understand why I have, I don't know. 10 or 12 LLCs. So I want to keep my businesses separated. I want to have different bank accounts for each business. And I want to file a different tax return for each of these businesses. And again, start with one. Don't you don't think you need 10? One, right? Because then you're going to be able to then get out of there and you're going to be able to build that business credit. And I'll tell you, there's nothing cooler than building business credit. Because, you know, I can walk into a bank and I can give them my LLC and my operating agreement and my EIN and my driver's license or whatever it may be. And I can say, hey, you know, I have a history of doing deals. Here's my business. Check it out. Um, would you guys be interested in giving me a loan to build my business? Well, they're, they're going to hopefully say yes. And over time, they're going to start they're going to start extending you lines of credit. I have lines of credit at five or six banks around town right now that are anywhere from 200 to 500 K. Right. And it's backed by my business and the history of my business. And the fact that we've filed tax returns seven, eight, nine years in a row now. Right. So they see it and they start trusting it. A business essentially is like a person. All right. But a business can be owned by multiple people and or sold. So there's obviously there's some obvious, you know, examples right there of the advantages of having a business. So, you know, that's that's really what it comes down to. So LLCs are going to be important, guys, if you're scaling your business, if you are wanting to protect your assets, if you want to build credit, if you want to have a business checking account, you're going to be required to have a business and you're going to be required to have the proper documentation to be able to open up that business account. Now, earlier I mentioned, and let's talk about this now, about doing deals. Well, if you're doing deals in your name, the, the title company typically is going to want a copy of your driver's license and they are going to want your social security number. And they're typically going to want you to sign a, a form whenever you're buying or selling that states that you give them permission to report that transaction to the IRS. Well, it's no different when you're using a business. The, the social security number is no longer important because that's how we identify ourselves with the IRS. What is important now is the EIN number. So an EIN number is just a social security number for a business, guys. That's it. It's simple, right? But they're going to want that EIN number. They're also going to want that art those articles of organization to know that you are, in fact, the owner of this business. And they're going to want that operating agreement so they can see that you are, in fact, the manager or the member of the business and that you are allowed to do whatever it is you're requesting to do. You, you know, if you have a partner, Maybe that partner doesn't have the ability in the operating agreement to go sign closing docs. Maybe only you do. That's why you have an operating agreement to figure out and lay out how the business is going to be operated. Don't overthink this. This is really simple. Again, it could be a one page, right? How is it going to be operated? If there's partners, what share of the business is going to go to who to, to what partner and what are the responsibilities of each partner? Now, you don't need to list out every employee that you have in an operating agreement. Operating agreements are really more so for the owners to know what's going on and who owns what, as well as if you have an employee or a partner or a spouse, could be any, anybody. In my case, it's a friend who works for me. Her name's Megan. She's amazing. And she's my transaction coordinator. So we give her the ability to go sign documents on behalf of the entity. It's all in the operating agreement. So when she shows up and they say, do you own, let's say household easy as one of the examples, she says, no, I work for the guys that do. And I'm in the operating agreement and that gives me the right to sign. And they flip to the last page and they say, Oh, signature authority page, Megan. Great. You vote. You're in the right place. 
And we've already pre-sent them our LLC docs, which is the Articles of Organization, the Operating Agreement, which we just mentioned. They probably already have our EIN, but if not, myself or Megan will send that to them. And then we're done. We can go buy or sell a property in our business. And that's it. I mean, that is really what it comes down to. Uh, this is gold. Thanks, Dave. No problem. Thanks for coming, guys. This is it. That, I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. So I told you guys I was going to try to keep this short, maybe around 25 minutes. We're at 23. I'm not in a hurry. I got a few more minutes to sit around and answer questions with you guys. But the more I talk, the more I'm going to confuse people. I know it. And I don't want to do that. I want to provide value. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying I'm going to end this right here, of course. But it's that simple. Don't overthink it. Don't think that, you know, this is a difficult thing. There's just a couple pieces that you need to be able to operate smoothly. Now, here's the cool thing, guys. Easier Accounting is not just a company that's going to help you guys set up the LLC and the operating agreement and register your EIN. They can do all that. Amazing. They've done it for me. I love these guys. What they can also do is they can help you with bookkeeping. They can help you with tax preparation and filing. In the event that you do have to do any sort of payroll, they can help you with that. And they can also do business preparations, which is tax preparations, which is going to help you save even more of that money that you are making. The last thing I want for anybody is to go out and make a bunch of money and then have to pay the government a big, big, big chunk of it, right? Legally, right? Legally, we can reduce our taxes by just working with somebody who knows how to operate the tax documents and by buying real estate and being creative, all right? So they're also gonna have some working capital solutions, which is a new thing they just offered. They offer audit protection, amazing. I love that because if the government wants to come knocking on my door and, and start you know, going through all my tax returns with the fine tooth comb and I'm dealing with the IRS, I can purchase audit protection from them which essentially will allow them to come in and work on my behalf without having to pay them because I buy the insurance, right? So they offer that and they can help you guys with your tax deductions and your expenses and just the bookkeeping and the filing and all sorts of stuff like that, guys. So I can't, I can't, I cannot stress enough the importance of having somebody on your team that knows the legal and the accounting side. These guys know both. So instead of having to hire a CFO and hire a, um, let's see, CFO will be the financial side and or, a, you know, the um, a legal side, a, an in-house attorney, nobody can afford that. But you can get that through this company in terms of having bookkeepers and tax preparation, tax filing, but even have help with the legal side of it as well, which is where we started in this, you know, to begin with here. Uh, do they do bookkeeping for all of your businesses? No, they do not. And here's why. I have a bookkeeper that's in my office. She's 30 feet away from me right now. We do a lot of deals and it makes sense to have that in-house. But I can tell you this, before I brought in a bookkeeper that was on payroll in my office that I can sit down with sometimes daily and review numbers and spreadsheets and all that stuff, I had them helping me with the bookkeeping, 100%. So they can do it and it's gonna be cheaper to have them do it if you're part-time or only doing a couple deals you know, a year, even a month. But when you own 62 single family homes and another 30 plus apartment units, you're fixing, flipping, you're burring, you're doing all the things that I'm doing. It just doesn't make sense to, to have somebody that I can't say, Hey, Jess, did you see that report that we got yesterday on this, you know, rental, like down the hall is going to be better, obviously, but a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that until they have a business that's actually making the money. Right. So excellent question. Do they help me? Have they helped me with bookkeeping? Yes. Have they helped me set up LLCs and create operating agreements and file for EIN numbers and, and, and get bank account situations set up and fixed and and working? Yes. All the above. Have they helped students with with all that? Yes. All the above. Can they prepare taxes for you? Yes. Can they help with the planning and the preparation? Yes, they can all the above. So excellent question. Love that. And um, I'm going to throw this up on the screen here, guys. Easieraccounting.com forward slash wholesaling Inc. That is the um, link that they gave me for my audience. And I promote this on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast as well. But that will actually give you guys the ability to book a free call. So use that link 
um, because if not, you know, they're going to probably want to, you know, charge you guys for that call because they are a business and obviously they're not going to be giving away a ton of time for free. But for my audience, they're going to do a free call, which is amazing. So during that call, you guys are going to be able to at least tell them what you're looking to do. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. But they can quote you on what that's going to cost and how long it's going to take. And here's the thing, guys. Every single student that I've ever worked with that has been focused on the logo of their business, what the damn business card looks like, what the website's going to say, right? How to write the operating agreement. 100% of the time when my students come to me with these problems, guess what they're not doing? They're not picking this little puppy up right here and making calls to sellers. They're not running appointments. They're not networking at RIA clubs. They're focused on these activities that are non-money making. Of course, they're needed. And I recommend everybody watching this, not only right this second in real time, but the replay and in the future to get an LLC. However, don't make this the priority over the marketing because you can do your first deal or even a few without one. It's just smarter, better to do it with one. Love it. Great question, guys. All right, cool. Let's get one or two more, and then we'll wrap up for the night. You guys, if you have anything else, let me know. Looks like we got a good amount of people watching. And, uh, guys, there will be a replay once we end it. I'll toggle that on so you can come back and you can rewatch this over and over as needed. Um, or maybe you came in a little late and you want to see the first part. Obviously, that's always a, an option as well. Uh, but I think I did a good job of breaking that down for you guys. I've been, I've been, I've been a business owner for 19 years. Started my first business when I was 19 years old. And I'm going to be 38 here soon. So I've been at this for a while. I've had tons of businesses. I've sold businesses. Guys, you can't sell a business that is in your name and in your name only and doesn't have a business checking account. Like, think about it. No one's going to buy it. Like, you have to have this these things separated, right? Love that. But bookkeeping is obviously something that they can do for you guys. You know, check out easieraccounting.com, just the main site without the forward slash wholesale and ink. And you can learn about a bunch of the things that they offer um, as well in terms of, you know, their services. I love working with them. And, you know, I, at this point, I just know better than to try to do this stuff on my own. And A, a it's time consuming. B, if I screw up, I'm going to have to do it twice. I don't like doing things twice. I would much rather do something once, know it's done right. It's much more cost effective and it's much more time effective too. All right. Josh says, just got a business checking, but I want to use the profit first model. How do I set that up? Well, go read profit first. Great question. It's all in the book. So you're going to need multiple accounts and it's all laid out in that book. And the profit first for real estate investors is even better because it's much more specific to what we actually do and why we need these accounts. We use it. We have an account for taxes. We have an account for profit. That's the whole point. Um, we even have an account for, we have four or five of them. But again, it's all in the book. It's all in the book. Josh says, most banks don't let you set up multiple accounts. Yes and no. They won't let you set up multiple accounts under the same entity. Um, however, those other accounts don't necessarily need to be business accounts or just go to different banks. I mean, there's always going to be a solution. Don't overthink it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a reason why they don't want you to have multiple accounts under the same EIN because it gets confusing when you're reporting to the government. That's probably the reason, you know, love it. All right. Josh has gotcha. I read the contractor version and loved it. Awesome guys. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, we got time for one or two more. I'm interested in real estate, but not sure where to start. Where would you recommend me to start? This is from Steven or Stefan. Hopefully, if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, brother. I, I apologize. Maybe it's Stefan. Um, the best place to start if you are new would be to go to your local RIA. That's my honest opinion. Go to your local RIA. Meet the people that are in the room because somebody's going to be somebody in there that's going to inspire you. And hopefully, I'm inspiring you here on this call. And, you know, you're going to see people in the room that are wholesaling. You're going to see people in the room that are fixing and flipping. You're going to see landlords in there because you kind of need to determine really what you want to do. If you're brand new, I think wholesaling is a really great approach. 
And we just launched a program to help people that are brand new. I'm going to drop the um, URL here. Let's see here. Here, we'll put this up. Show up on the stage. Interested, but I'm not sure where to start. What would you recommend? We're going to go back to the chat here, and we're going to drop that in. So if you go over to wholesalinginc.com forward slash roadmap, you can um, – you can work with me. I'd love to work with you. Let's go. All right. We have a program that teaches people how to get started, how to get their first wholesale deal. Um, and we just launched this program like 48 hours ago. It's brand new. It's amazing. I'm so excited. All right. What was the name of the book? Uh, the book that we were talking about earlier was Profit First for Real Estate Investors. There's an, uh, The original book is actually called Profit First. And that was written by, I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a second book that is basically the same idea and concept, but it's more tailored and more directed towards the real estate investor and the real estate community. So it's great. So it's, it's a book on, you know, how to prioritize making profits and how to prioritize putting money aside to pay your taxes so you don't get into a bind. Great book. Love it. Uh, let's see what else has we got. What is bookkeeping? Bookkeeping is uh, you keeping track of what's going on in your business, and it is categorizing your your expenses into buckets. Is that expense accounting? Is it finance? Is it maintenance on a property? Is it closing costs? Is it joint venture fees to other wholesalers or investors in your market? You know, without tracking these things, you're, it's going to be hard to grow these things as well as to identify not only efficiencies, but effectiveness within your business. So for example, you know, bookkeeping will allow me to run a report and say, Hey, we've spent $600 on cold calling. We haven't had a lead. Well, hey, I might want to cut my cold calling, but it also may say, Hey, we're spending, you know, 1800 on direct mail, but we're averaging $22,000 wholesale deals for that amount of spend. Right. So you got to you got to have bookkeeping to kind of know what's going on in your business. You're also going to need bookkeeping to, uh, to to file your taxes. You can't just give the IRS a box, a shoebox full of receipts. You know, they want it in a certain way and bookkeeping will allow you to present it to them the way they want it. So that's a really good question. In real estate, where would you recommend a teen start? Um, a teen, no different from anyone else. Go check out wholesalinginc.com forward slash roadmap. I got it up on the screen here. Um I think that's how you spell it. Hopefully that's right. Uh, we just we just uh, launched this a couple of days ago. It's brand new. We're getting we're getting some people uh, signed up, and the goal here is is the zero to one. It's the first deal. That's the goal. We're going to get you that first real estate deal. And if you don't have a ton of money, that's okay because wholesaling doesn't require it. I'm not telling you guys that this is going to be easy. You're going to have to work hard, but I can tell you this: it is simple. I've done hundreds of deals. Hundreds. I mean, it's already the 13th of July. I think we've done four of them this month already. I mean, we do this in our sleep so we can teach it to you guys too. Uh, let's see here. All right. Thanks. Uh, the book is probably first for real estate investors. Yep. You guys got it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You got my attention regardless of the name. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, guys, go check it out. Uh, wholesalinginc.com forward slash roadmap. If you want to apply and work with me, Love to work with you. Love to helping you get that first deal. And guys, if you are looking to, you know, get your business set up, go use easieraccounting.com forward slash wholesaling inc. And that's going to be a place where you can book a free strategy session. I think they maybe even give you 30 minutes. Don't quote me on that. But you can ask all kinds of questions about bookkeeping and LLCs and operating agreements and EIN numbers and tax filing and preparation and expenses and how it all works. And these guys, not only are they going to be able to get this set up for you, they're professional. They work for me. So they're part of my team. And I know what they're doing because I wouldn't be promoting them. I wouldn't be working with them if they weren't. These guys rock. They really, really do. They care, which is another thing. I think they have a 98% client satisfaction. You're always going to have somebody that's going to be pissed off, obviously, right? Always. But 98% is pretty damn good. Let's, let's be honest. All right, guys. With that, we're going to wrap. Thanks for attending. Again, I'm going to toggle on the replay once I hit the end button here in just a second. And uh, guys, check these two resources out. We can help you get that first deal. My, my friends over at Easier Accounting can help you get that LLC set up. They can help you file your taxes. They offer bookkeeping. They can do it all. You guys have a great rest of your night. You got this. I believe in you. 
Just make sure you believe in yourself. And that kind of sounds stupid, but man, you got to believe in yourself. That's step number one. If you guys are believing yourself, you put in the work. There's a little bit of guidance. You guys are going to be doing deals in no time. I love it. You guys have a great night. We'll talk soon. Signing off.